Hey, what's up everybody? It is Mr. Boylan. Today, in this video, what in the heck are we gonna do? We're gonna express and manipulate chemical quantities using scientific conventions and mathematical procedures, including significant figures. Sounds like a thriller. As always, let's break it down a little bit. First thing we're gonna do is explain the purpose of significant figures. Why in the heck do we even have to worry about them? Two, we are then gonna determine the number of significant figures in a measurement. Finally, numero tres. We are gonna perform mathematical calculations involving significant figures. Okay, so first things first, what in the heck is a significant figure? A significant figure in a measurement consists of all the digits known with certainty plus one final digit, which is somewhat uncertain or is estimated. So I want you to take a quick look at the two beakers that you have on your screen. Notice that the one on your left has far more graduations than the one on your right even though they're both 200 milliliter beakers. As we compare the two beakers, the beaker on the left has graduations every 10 milliliters, while the beaker on the right only has graduations every 100 milliliters. Now, what does this mean when we're trying to read these pieces of equipment using significant figures? As I take a look at the beaker on the left, and as I think about significant figures, I know for sure that this volume is greater than 100, milliliters, but less than 200. So my hundreds place value is known with certainty. I also know that my water level is definitely more than 140, but less than 150. So with certainty, I can say 140 something. But now we get to the point where I have to estimate. I'm not given individual graduations for the one milliliter volume but I definitely know that it's more than 140, but less than 150. So as I read this, I'm gonna say 149 milliliters, even though someone else might read that exact same beaker and say 148. There is some estimation in that final digit. As I look at the beaker on the right, notice again the graduations are only every 100 milliliters. So I know for sure or with certainty that I have definitely 100 milliliters in this beaker but I cannot say that I have 149 milliliters. The level of precision in this beaker is not as good. Here, I have to estimate the tens place. So I'm gonna say it's about 150 milliliters. Boom. Okay, so there are your two beakers, each of them read using significant figures based on the graduations that each of them have. Okay, so as we think about the purpose of significant figures, it's really gonna tell us how precise the piece of equipment is that we're using in our lab. The next thing we need to do is determine the number of significant figures in a measurement. We're not always gonna be able to do a lab, or maybe we're trying to interpret the data from someone else. How can we look at their measurements and tell how precise their equipment was? Okay, so as we try to determine the number of significant figures in a measurement, it's just a series of rules. Rule number one, all non-zero digits are significant. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. If it's not a zero, it has to have been measured and therefore is significant. Okay, easy enough, but things get tricky when we start having zeros. Um, your second rule of Fig Club is to look for zeros between non-zero digits. That means they must also have been measured and therefore they are also significant. Rule number three look for a decimal point. If there is a decimal point, your next step is to count all the zeros to the right of the last non-zero. That decimal point is gonna indicate that those zeros have also been measured and are therefore significant. If there is no decimal point, you reach the total number of significant figures one step sooner. Okay, so this is something that just takes a little bit of practice. We're gonna run through a couple of examples right here. As you take a look at the first measurement, we've got 328 milliliters. First rule of Fig Club, look for non-zero digits. Anything that is not a zero is significant. In this case, all three digits are significant. The three, the two, and the eight aren't zeros. That means they must have been measured. But let's work through all the rules. Rule number two, look for zeros between non-zeros don't have to worry about it here. Rule number three, look for a decimal point. There is no decimal point, so we're gonna get there one step quicker. Our total number of sig figs here, three plus zero, three significant figures. Each of the measurements, the three, 
the two and the eight is significant. All right, let's, let's try another one. This one, 200 milliliters. Let's work through the rules of Fit Club. Rule number one, look for non-zero digits. All of them will be significant. In this case, we only have one non-zero digit. It's the two. Rule number two, look for zeros between non-zeros. They are also significant. Here, I have a couple of zeros. And although there's a non-zero on one end, there's not a non-zero on the other. So these are not significant. Next step, look for a decimal point. There isn't one, so I've arrived at my total number of significant figures. In this measurement, there's only one significant digit or significant figure. It's the two. All right, let's try 200 decimal point milliliters. Working through the rules of Fig Club one more time, look for non-zero digits. Again, the two will be significant. Rule number two, we're gonna look for zeros between non-zeros. Again, we have a couple of zeros here, but they're not trapped in between any non-zero digits, so they're not significant. Uh-oh, look for a decimal point, rule number three. We do have a decimal point this time, so we're gonna take a little detour to get to rule number four. Fourth rule of Fig Club is count all the zeros to the right of the last non-zero. So as I look at my measurement, the last non-zero here is the two. I have to count all of the zeros to the right of that. In this case, this zero and this zero. So both of these zeros are significant using that fourth rule. So we arrive at our total number of significant digits. In this case, there are three significant figures. So just the addition of that decimal point tells me something about the precision of the piece of equipment that this chemist used to make that measurement. Okay, last example here, uh, 109.0 milliliters. We're gonna take a look here. Rule number one, look for non-zero digits. In this case, the one and the nine. We have two significant digits so far. Second rule of Fig Club, look for zeros between non-zeros. In this case, we have two zeros. I am gonna count the zero here between the one and the nine, indicating that it has been measured with certainty. Third rule of Fig Club is look for a decimal point. We've got one, take a little detour, count all zeros to the right of the last non-zero. So as I look at my measurement here, is the one or is the nine the last non-zero? The nine is the last non-zero. So I count all the zeros to the right of it, in this case, the zero after the decimal point. So my total number of significant figures in this example is quattro, four. Just kidding, one more example, 0 0.010 milliliters. How many significant figures? First rule of Fig Club is look for non-zero digits. The one. So we've got one sig fig so far. Second rule of Fig Club, look for zeros between non-zeros. I've got a bunch of zeros here, but none of them are wedged in between two non-zero digits. None of those zeros are significant using the second rule of Fig Club. Third rule, look for a decimal point. We've got one. Fourth rule of Fig Club, count all zeros to the right of the last non-zero. Again, in this case, I only have one non-zero digit, but I'm only gonna count the zeros to the right of it. These zeros are just placeholders. So as I look for the total number of significant digits in this measurement, it is in fact two sig figs.